Well, welcome, everyone, to another episode of Conscious Gatherers. Uh, I'm joined with Bev and Royce, and I'd like to thank both of them for stepping in two weeks ago when uh, I wasn't able to be there. Uh, it was a fantastic job and a good audience listening in. So thank you both for being there. How are you doing tonight? Very well. I'm doing you. well, thank you. And welcome, everybody, to episode 33. And uh, go ahead, Royce. Well, I just said uh, it, it, it's good to good to hear your voice, Terry. Good to have you here. Yes, yes. So yeah. I'd like to open the show tonight with talking about that and being gone. So um, we know that there is a lot of concern, a lot of fear around the COVID. Uh, and so I'd like to share my experience because I did go through COVID and um, I should be a very high risk individual. I'm 71 years old, be 72 in March. Um, I'm being treated for congestive heart failure for the last four years. So I would be be considered as the main media has been portraying that I'm a high risk potential uh, COVID and could be very serious for me. So the story that I'd like to relate, you know that on this show, we talk about being responsible. We talk about that you're in charge of your environment and what happens to you. You're not a victim. You are, are totally in charge. Um, your words matter. Your thoughts matter. And so I would like to share my episode, my experience with COVID, uh, being in a so-called high-risk category. Um, my whole family, well, three of my four children, their spouses and my grandkids were all here for Christmas. And they came in on Monday prior to Christmas. On Tuesday, the following day, we had been doing things. My wife was contacted by one of her clients that she had been seeing and said that she had tested positive for COVID. So my wife basically started isolating herself from the rest of us, which were about 10 of us. Um, we still did activities, um, but, you know, she kind of isolated from us. On Thursday, Christmas Eve, she, she got symptoms uh, or she, yeah, the morning of Christmas Eve, she started getting symptoms uh, of the COVID, not feeling well, uh, achy, and all that stuff. So she went and got a rapid test and tested positive for COVID on, on Christmas Eve. So from that point on, she even isolated herself more, even in the house. She was wearing a mask. Um, no one else wore a mask in the house. Again, my three children, my, my three children, their spouses, and four grandkids were all here. Uh, during Christmas dinner, we were in the dining room. My wife was in the living room with a mask and, again, not participating, trying to stay away from us as much as possible. So as soon as <clears throat> she um, tested positive and started the symptoms, um, it's, we had um, – my, all of my relatives left except for the one that lives in town on Sunday. So Sunday morning, um, I took them to the airport, my, older, my middle – youngest son – and his wife were driving to um, Hilton Head for another week with her parents. So that Sunday, um, two days after Christmas, or a day after Christmas, I started getting the symptoms of COVID. Um, I was coughing, coughing up phlegm. I had a fever. Uh, didn't have any energy. So I didn't bother go get tested. I mean, since my wife had already tested and she had it, I knew what it was. So immediately on Sunday... I started twice a day. Um, I would say it in my morning meditation and in my evening, um, con you know, thank yous and solitaries to, to my, my team that, that helped me. Uh, that, you know, hey, um, this COVID is not going to affect me. I want you all to work on my body and, and be it healthy. Get everything that's in my body that needs cleaning out to clean it out. Um, and we'll beat this thing because... We are in control, and it's not control. So that was an, uh, I did that from Sunday continuously twice a day, and sometimes middle of the day. But one other thing I started to do is because my family's not necessarily in the same belief system that I am. Um, I don't think any of them meditate. Um, and, I, I, you know, they're positive people. They all work. They, they treat people nice. But So I went and started working on all of them besides myself which you can do um, as long as it's beneficial. Um, 
you should never do anything that's harmful. So I was kind of cleaning out, keeping the energy good for them and stuff. The long and short of that whole story is, well, let me let me go on. So up through about Wednesday, I, I was coughing a lot, had a fever and, um, you know, all the symptoms. Well, come, I think, Wednesday late afternoon, my fever was going away and gone. By Thursday, I had no fever. Um, I was feeling pretty good, but I still had, you know, not a lot of energy, still coughing. I think it was on Wednesday I called a doctor friend of mine because I was coughing up phlegm that I wanted to ask him, you know, I said, I feel fine. I, can't, I, I never lost any sort of breathing. I always could breathe fine. And that's what he had asked me. I said, the only thing was that I was coughing up phlegm quite a bit. And he says, well, let me get you a Z-Pack. Uh, it won't help the virus because Z-Pack is only going to work on bacteria. But let's be on the safe side and get you. So I started on a Z-Pack. It did help me uh, get rid of the cough with the phlegm. So maybe that was some bacterial stuff going on. But by Sunday, the, the, a week, seven days from when I actually started feeling bad and having it, uh, I felt completely normal. Um, there was nothing left, um, you know, as far as symptoms that I was having. I just felt really good. The only funny thing that that was about, so that Sunday, the Sunday week from the day after Christmas, uh, feeling normal, everything normal, I, start, I, I lost my sense of smell and, and, and taste, which was interesting. And it just lasted till this Sunday passed where I've gained it back, I think I have it about 80%. So the message that I'm trying to send out there to reiterate is um, don't, I mean, it's a serious, it's, it, it can be a serious thing, this COVID, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because we are in control of everything we experience in our life. It's not someone else's fault. It wasn't my wife's fault that I got COVID. My, my being needed to experience what it needed to. And it probably was the lesson, hey, let's use what you, you preach. Let's use it on yourself and your family, and let's see what happens. And absolutely, I don't know anybody that has, in my age bracket with my conditions, caught COVID and been done with it in seven days. Now, the further the story, of all the people that were here, uh, they all went and got tested multiple times. Only one, one my daughter-in-law and her son and my son, who had gone to Hilton Head for another week through um, New Year's, she's the only one that finally, this last week, just tested positive. And my thought is that she caught it while she was in Hilton Head and not while she was here. Um, basically, I, I still work uh, with them every night, um, but... I find that quite interesting that we had 10 or 11 of us around. I was the only one that caught it, and I believe it was for a, to be a lesson to show that what we say is true, and I got rid of it, and no one else but one person. I think that's quite remarkable, um, and I just wanted to share that with you, and that was why I wasn't here two weeks ago, so you, you know what that was. Bev, Rose, back to you. Rose. Well, thank you, Terry, for sharing that because it um... – that should mean a lot to people because I know a lot of people are still extremely fearful because of what they're reading um, uh, in the papers and or whatever <laughs> or online and also hearing on mainstream media. Um, and <laughs> I want to get into that, some of that mainstream media in a bit, uh, but it's, uh, it's like, hey, it doesn't have to, you know, we are in charge. And I'm really glad you said that because we're, we're in control of everything. And um, so if we allow it to overtake us or the anxiety overtake us, that, that lessens your immune system. So um, just be aware of that and not to scare anybody, but it's like, come on, we're in charge. We cannot, we've been talking about pointing the finger and blaming, be it the Wuhan uh, facility in China or whatever. Um, you know, we have to put the blame somewhere else. So if we catch it, then you right. can and easily I'd also overcome. like to say I'm not diminishing any grief that anybody's going through because maybe of a loss of a loved one due to this crazy disease. But know, know in your heart that for whatever reason, and it's not ours to know 
or to even ask why, but they had chosen that it's this time to leave. Um, the COVID didn't take them. They used it as a vehicle to move on for whatever reason it is. Um, but I'm not diminishing what feelings people are left with because of it. It's sad, but just know that that was their decision and some, and we don't know why. Um, but anyway. Yeah. Yes. Well, remember each person has their own past, their own experiences, uh, whatever they decide they want to experience. And we're here to help everybody uh, understand what we truly are and how magnificent we are. Um, but you, can, you can't judge. You know, we talked about, about judgment, I don't know how many times, and um, the more of that will come in today's conversation. Um, your thoughts, Royce? Well, I was just thinking about the experience thing. You know, you can look from the outside at some like somebody else's experience, and you can, you know, think that you have a grip on it. You can think that you really understand it. But when, when you have the experience yourself, it like fulfills it, you know. You, you have the full understanding of what that is. And out of that comes great things like a, a deeper sense of compassion. Um, it, it, you can just take it in a number of different ways. It, but the, but to, the true understanding comes a great deal through the experience of something. Yeah, uh, I like that. I'm writing notes as, as you're speaking. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that because that goes with everything. And uh, before you know, we came on the show, uh, we were talking about experiencing drama. And um, that goes into everything that's going um, on today. And I was just telling both uh, Royce and Terry, uh, I was on uh, texting and um, emails, et cetera, constantly uh, the last few days because of everything that's been going on. And, um, and some people were having anxiety issues, other ones were not. And it was just observing everything that's going on. But the ones experiencing the drama are going through the anxiety is, is uh, it, it's just working on assisting them to work through that because we've been told so many times and I, st we still get, I still get that information uh, speaking for myself that this is all part of the div divine plan that we put into place. Mm -hmm. So just understanding that everything I feel is going to work out beautifully, even though right now it doesn't look like it. So, um, so if anybody else has any comments on that, go right ahead. Well, uh, yes, yeah, we, we spoke on this show before about <clears throat> not getting involved in the drama because what happens when you get in, involved in a drama, you pick sides. A drama is two sides. It's, it's one side presenting something and the other side, you know, showing the opposite of that. And it's a lot of emotion involved. And the number one thing that controls how we create is our emotion. So if I'm trying to create a situation for myself, the more I can feel it already done and the more emotion, the feeling I can put in into it, the faster it manifests. So the key factor there is emotion and feeling. And if you get caught up in a drama and you're choosing sides, there's a lot of emotion and feeling in that and you're attracting that to you um, or whatever it may be. So try not to get involved in the drama Right now, there's a lot of drama going on, and it's really not our, re our place to figure out what it's all about. There is a reason for it. There's underlying reasons that we're not seeing or being told, um, unless you're in some other circles, but, and, and then it makes sense. But just to look at the events and the drama that's going on on the surface and the way the media is presenting it, um, whatever you think about that. That's drama, and it, you can't rationalize what it's really all about because they're coming from one side or the other. They're not in the middle observing. So that's, that's all I'd like to add to that. And fear, I'm sorry, let me, what, what Bev said, tr stay away from fear because fear is the most charged emotion and feeling there is, um, even some more so than hate. 
fear is is the strongest. Uh, well, I take that back. Love is the strongest, but fear, you know, trumps that. If you've got it, you got to take fear away from it. So, anyway, back to you guys. All right, go ahead, Royce. Well, I was what what you just said. I I think I have a little bit of an issue with that. I, I see love as you know it doesn't have a trump. It it's a you you can't you can't undo it. It is the most most powerful force, most powerful. I, I can't even find a word to put to it. Um, and and uh, I've heard a lot of people say that. Uh, Fear is the opposite of love, and I take issue with that. I that that means that they're 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 equals, and they're not. So um, there there isn't anything that come can come close to love. So if you can if you can if we can all you know hold ourselves in in love, and that starts with loving yourself. If you you can't love yourself. It's, it's really difficult to stretch out there and to love somebody else or love something else. Um, it just doesn't happen very well. So, so the love is the, the most powerful. That, that's the way I see it anyway. Well, and I, I did correct myself and say love is the most powerful. But it's, it's easy if you get involved in the drama and the fear part. If I'm in a, if, you know, if I'm in a dark room... And I'm fearful of what's going on unless I actually bring in the light or turn on the light, which will take away the fear and the darkness. I'm going to I'm going to experience darkness because light will always and love will always trump the fear and darkness. But unless you do something to bring the light in when it is dark, when you're feeling fearful, you'll stay in that feeling. So bring a candle, bring a light, turn on the light. But I agree with what Roy said. Yeah. I, I do too. So it's well put because I, I have said it's the opposite of love and um, just the way you said it makes really more sense because sometimes that, that even a touch of fear, if you know, if you, uh, you know, something will tell you don't jump over that cliff, right? <laughs> because it might hurt. <laughs> so, so, so you don't go there. Uh, and so we have that built within us. And again, we, you know, I mentioned ma- how magnificent we are, and and uh, and Royce and I have been talking ourself, ourselves as magnificent machines, and so uh, you're just using that terminology, and uh, but you know whatever uh, you know you whoever's listening, however they look at it, it's up to them. But um, it's just we are extremely incredible. Uh, uh, well. I don't know about, can I say machines, but organic, beautiful <laughs> beings. How about beings? Because to me, we are a being. So, well, um, the other day uh, I had gotten a message and uh, I did share it with a few people. And um, I got some remarks back and some not. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, the first words, uh, first word I got, I kept hearing was D-Day. So you know, we're familiar with that, that terminology, and you know, when I wrote it, didn't think much about it, and I was talking to a friend in Florida, and I said, by the way, what is D-Day? And I said, I, I know it's when we you know, landed on the beaches in Normandy, but what does it really mean? And so the, the, uh, my thoughts went to into the trenches. And so I feel that's what's going on in the world. Um, and then I looked up D-Day, <laughs> and I thought this was kind of interesting just with the words that were given um, online. And it's, uh, according to history, it's the Allied Invasion of Normandy in Operation Overlord. I thought that was interesting, Overlord. Mm-hmm. And it began the liberation of Ger- German-occupied France and laid the foundations of the Allied victory on the Western Front. So I feel on a, on a global scale, this whole thing is going to be our liberation. Um, even though right now it doesn't look like it, especially with the, the continued censorship uh, that we're seeing and all, you know, all kinds of things right now. Um, so... Uh, it's just interesting. So we're going into the trenches to clean them out for our liberation of the planet. 
Now, this last, uh, I think our last last episode, um, uh, as Royce and I were talking, I had mentioned uh, that we were, I didn't agree with being a prison, a prison planet. However, uh, because I think this planet is absolutely gorgeous. And, um, but we had experienced the duality to its greatest degree, so to speak. And, um, uh, and we're, we're pulling out of that to, to really understand, again, I'm going to use the word magnificence that we, we truly are. So I do feel that so much more is going to be exposed. And I was told that, that, that the earth is on the cusp of a new day. And, um, and, and I was told that we will be in complete knowledge of what has held many people in ca- captivity. Uh, so it's going to come out in snippets. Uh, as to hold back too much confusion because people are going to say what and not understand what has gone on. But, um, you know, it just stay as relaxed as you can as this information is spilled out. At least that's how I'm feeling. So I was also said, uh, told that life on this planet is now forever change, changed. And again, the word breathe, they said breathe as this information is released. So, um, oh, it is, I did get, yeah, it is deep in the trenches are being cleared out and that we're to release all judgments as they will not serve us. So just, uh, any, any comments on that? Nope. Okay. Um, this goes into what we've already discussed. Hold those in the light who are bringing the truth forward. This will lead many to go down on their knees yet no that all who proclaim their own power of love, there it comes back in, will prevail. As the so-called leaders are assisting the masses to understand what has gone on and what will follow what you call our current timeline. Um, also, was reminded for us to prepare our own closets. I thought that was an interesting word. Uh, and remove what no longer serves us. And, and they said, in this we say each one has more cleaning to do. Like, okay. Um, but they said, also said that the new day is here and you will be seeing it more clearly as our own closets are cleaned. Uh, do not be disheartened through these processes and rejoice that this day is here. So remember, we all came here to this planet at this moment to see all of this through and that is to know, and that is to know the love that each of us bring to this planet to a whole new level. So uh, I'm excited about that. So be patient. I know a lot of people are not patient. When's this going to happen? When's that going to happen? But it, it will happen. I, I just feel that like a lot more will happen, but be patient as it comes out. So, um, and also breathe as some of this information comes out. So anyway, I wanted to share that. And um, the truth are being... Um, uh, given and uh, you know, use that gut feel um, of what you feel is right for you, and not everybody's going to have the same feeling uh, as as another. So do remember that and re- be respective of, of another's choices. So, and you, you know that. I, excuse me, am I interrupting? No, go ahead. Okay, um, that thing of breathing. For the individual, it's it's like uh, um, calling in the the force of the tide, you know, the ebb and flow of the tide. Um, uh, breathing in, you know, the, the the water comes in. Breathing out, the water pulls out, and what, what goes out with it? All the garbage, you know. So for each person, individual, maybe using that as a uh, as a visual for it, you know seeing the water come in and the water going out and all of the garbage going out with it. And so I think that that serves hmm. all of us daily. Hmm. Interesting uh, how you put that because it does give you a visual and, you know, whatever you want to throw out into letting go of and let the tide yeah. take it out and let that energy take it out or transmute it. Yeah. All right. Well, 
uh, it's uh, it, interesting times. I did have a friend that told me um, yesterday. She says, "Okay, you know, uh, you know, uh, universe, what's what's for me next? What am I here for? Am I done? You know, all these questions. Many I've heard many people say, "I'm done. I went out of here." Or they'll say, "What's next? If I'm supposed to be here, then let me do something." <laughs> or all whatever words we want to use. And um, and this person was told, "2021 is important for you to be here." So I mean, may have changed the words, but that's essentially what came out. So uh, all of us uh, and those that are listening, just remember, this is indeed an extremely important time for the planet and beyond. Well, I, I have I a it. challenge for everybody. Um, recently, I had somebody give me a call, a dear friend, and that was what they had to say was, thank you for staying. And I can't tell you how much that meant to me. I mean, it just, it brought me to tears. And so my challenge to everyone is pick out somebody that you know. And and when when they, they do something that, that just brings a smile to your face, tell them, thank you for staying and for making me smile. Yeah, that was beautiful, Royce. Um, you know, and we're fortunate because we have each other and other people too to, to, to talk and bounce things off of. But while you were talking, Bev, and bringing up that, those images, I had a thought come into my mind. Uh, and you know how roller coasters are. Some people love them and some people just don't want to get on them. Um, and I think this is the time, um, <clears throat> to, to get on the, if you're going to get on the roller coaster, sit in the front seat with your hands up and your seatbelt on. <laughs> and enjoy the ride. <laughs> I love I, it. That's how I used to ride roller coasters. Uh, in California, in um, I choose to remember, it's a big big park. It's, not, it's like Six Flags. But they have two roller coasters side by side. One of them goes backwards and one of them oh. regular. <laughs> so Ooh. you can imagine sitting and going backwards with your hands up and on the, in the front row are going, yahoo! So <laughs> that, that's my suggestion. And, and, and if you if it, they fear if you fear roller coasters, don't get on them. Just watch them. Enjoy the people that are on it screaming and yelling because they're enjoying that. Most of them. <laughs> anyway, that's all. They may I not have. feel that at the time, but then they figure out, oh, that's what it was all about. So. Let's go on it again. <laughs> I used Maybe to run. <laughs> when I get off, I used to run to get back in line to get back on. It was so much fun. Hmm. I can't <laughs> say I felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of the newer rides that I've experienced at, like, um, Carowinds, okay, some of those are a little bit more challenging to me. <laughs> like when you're you're sitting in a seat and your your legs are hanging down and you're in the front and you're doing what thing like a roller that was a little bit more challenging um and I had to think about whether I wanted to get back on or not but that was quite a few years ago at this point I don't sure what I would do <laughs> well you know it that came to mind the word that came to me was secure because of your legs were dangling you felt less yeah. secure yeah, and so yeah. that, you know, it's a metaphor for life. You feel yeah. like you're dangling and you, oh, yeah. it was like, and, and it your was security is gone. Quite interesting. Or lessened. Yes. Yes. I, I have a short story about um, a little, it was called a wild mouse. I was, I was quite young at the time. Uh, there wasn't anybody else around. And uh, my parents had taken me to this place at Myrtle Beach. And so, um here, I, w I wanted to ride it. It looked re like a lot of fun. And so this man, he started up the ride just for me to be able to ride it. But he didn't give me enough time to get fastened in. Now, this thing gets really wild at the top, you know, slinging from side to side. And it, it, it was a wild mouse, I'll tell you. But uh, when all was said and done, <laughs> I was filled with a greater sense of gratitude. <laughs> Because I made it through. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Well, we're on. Uh, we are on our roller coaster right now. Roller coaster, and uh, things are up and down. And I, I feel myself. You know, I'll listen to a few things, and I then I challenge myself. I thought, man, I thought this was going to happen. How come I'm seeing this? And then I, then I, I step back and said, all right, trust the information that you've received and that what you feel is going to happen. And so I'm going with that. So I think this, uh, you know, here on, on earth and uh, especially in the United States, uh, well, other countries are jumping in, um, that so much is going to such, so much more is going to come out and um, possibly tonight um, that we might see some uh, things happen. So um it's like uh, they say, keep buckled up and enjoy the ride. And uh, it indeed is a ride, but it's like when it's all over, I think, you know, we're going to be dancing in the streets. And, there you um, go. You know, Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been a very interesting session, ladies. I appreciate all your points of view and your stories, sharing them. Um, I don't think we have any callers on at this time. Um listeners live so if there are this would be the time to uh, ask a question of any one of us and then if not what we'll do is we'll sign off and be able to get this we'll, we'll post this on our con uh, uh, conscious gatherers YouTube channel it'll be up probably by tomorrow evening if not sooner um, and we appreciate every one of you that either listens to us live and or watches our channel. Ladies, would you like to say something before we sign off? Well, I thank everybody for uh, being there with us too, because I just, uh, again, such important times are, are happening right now. And also that our next podcast will be January the 26th. Okay, Royce. Yes. I just wanted to say that if you can hear my voice, I love you. Please know that, and I thank you for staying. <laughs> and with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you on the 26th again. Um, be safe, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. Good night. Good night. Good night.